Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll be looking at the quick opportunist of Africa. Thank you to RedBuys6722 for today's topic, Delta Dromius. Delta Dromius was first discovered in 1995 by paleontologist Gabrielle Lyon in the modern-day African country of Morocco. Specifically, an area called the Kemkem region of the Moroccan Sahara. This original fossil, which included a variety of bones including toes, vertebrae, and limbs, were discovered alongside a set of tracks which were also attributed to the beast. A year later, in 1996, paleontologist Ernst Stromer would uncover a number of theropod dinosaur fossils and attribute them to a different dinosaur known as Bahariosaurus. However, paleontologist Paul Sereno would instead suggest that Stromer's fossils, as well as the specimen from 1995, belong to a new genus of dinosaur called the Deltadromius agilis. This decision would not last long, as the specimen discovered by Stromer would later be attributed to an entirely different genus due to notable differences from the type 1995 specimen of Delta Dromius, leaving this 1995 specimen as the only recognized fossil of Delta Dromius today. This confusion between Bahariosaurus and Delta Dromius is actually quite understandable, as paleontologists have been debating whether the two genus are separate for years. Sereno and his team authored a paper exploring Cretaceous dinosaurs of Africa, where he noted that his team believes specimens of Bahariosaurus should be classified as Deltadromius, while the genus Bahariosaurus is a nomen dubium, or non-existent, classification of dinosaurs, due to a lack of definitive fossils in the latter's genus. However, Making a definitive comparison between the two is somewhat difficult, as neither dinosaurs have ever had a skull recovered, and Bahariosaurus's type specimen was destroyed in a World War II air raid, while other fossils attributed to the genus are questioned for actually being Bahariosaurus. Deltadromius only has one recognized species, the Deltadromius agilis. The name Deltadromius translates from Latin, stemming from the words delta for, well, delta, in reference to the geological formation of wetlands around rivers, which would have been abundant when this dinosaur lived, as well as dromius, meaning runner, translating to delta runner. This name is in reference to the high speeds that this animal was capable of, further reinforced by its species name of Agilis, translating to Agile. While this dinosaur was certainly a theropod, or lizard-hipped, dinosaur, further classification has not been as well agreed upon. Over the years, Deltadromis has been classified as everything from a Carnosaur to even a Tyrannosaur. While the original 1996 classification by Sereno argues otherwise, most studies today argue that Deltadromius was a member of the Ceratosaurian group, named after one of its most famous members, the Ceratosaurus. More specifically, Deltadromius belonged to a primitive family of ceratosaurs called the Noasauridae. The Noasauridae were closely related to the short-armed Abelosauridae, which included members like the Majungasaurus and Carnotaurus but are noted as different due to their more unique jaw structure and more traditional theropod bodies. However, similar to its relation to Bahariosaurus, this topic will most likely be debated among scientists for years to come. As for Deltadromius itself, estimates based on the incomplete 1995 fossil project this dinosaur to be fairly large. It would have measured about 26 feet or 8 meters long and reached up to 8 feet or 2.4 meters tall at the hip. It would have weighed almost one ton 
or 1,000 kilograms, about the same weight as an average African elephant. While this dinosaur was by no means small, it was actually quite small compared to other carnivores it would have lived alongside in Africa during the Cretaceous, including the enormous Caracardontosaurus, which could reach up to 45 feet long, and the titanic Spinosaurus, that could reach up to 52 feet long, the largest terrestrial carnivore to ever live. It's hard to believe a creature like Delta Dromius could compete with such behemoths. However, the secret as to how it could survive may not lay in its size, but its shape. Delta Dromius' skeleton and body was extremely thin, much less bulky than its larger counterparts. This thin physique would help the dinosaur reach incredible speeds, with estimates placing it at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Based on its slender body and fast speeds, Delta Dromius is often referred to as the cheetah of the dinosaurs, and some suggest Delta Dromius might have been the fastest dinosaur to ever live. This speed and agility would most likely play into how this animal would have hunted. The fragile frame of Delta Dromius would make prolonged combat difficult, so it probably would have avoided such engagements. Instead, rather than overpowering its prey, like the Caracardontosaurus, Delta Dromius would rapidly strike its prey, wearing them down before finally delivering the killing blow. This lifestyle would have been aided by its long legs, supporting a bipedal stance and ending in three sharp clawed toes. Its arms were actually quite long for its family, ending in powerful claws ideal for slashing prey as it chased them. Its neck was also quite long, and would have supported a fairly small skull, sporting a strong jaw lined with razor-sharp teeth for cutting and slicing through flesh. Dotodromius would have lived during the late Cretaceous, almost 95 million years ago. It would have lived throughout northern Africa, particularly parts of modern-day Morocco. During this time, Africa would have been a fairly tropical environment, interlaced with long, winding rivers and dotted with lush forests and wetlands. As previously mentioned, Delta Dromius would have had to compete with massive carnivores, like Caracardontosaurus and, to a lesser extent, Spinosaurus, due to Spinosaurus primarily being a... Oh, 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 oh wait, never mind. Apparently we're back to Spinosaurus being a terrestrial carnivore. Feel free to come back in two years to comment why that's wrong again. I won't blame you. Due to the previously mentioned lack of skull, while this dinosaur was certainly a carnivore, its ideal prey is not completely agreed upon among scientists. Based on its long arms and powerful legs, it most likely would have attacked large or medium-sized dinosaurs, including sauropods and the sail-backed Oranosaurus. However, some argue due to its slender body and to avoid competition with large carnivores, Delta Dromius would have instead rely upon smaller prey, like small herbivorous dinosaurs or mammals and reptiles. Today, Delta Dromius is often overshadowed by other large carnivores, not unlike when the dinosaur was alive. However, Delta Dromius has been able to land a few appearances in pop culture, including appearances in toy lines like the Safari Limited Collection, as well as various appearances in the 2005 television series Dinosaur King, which dared to ask the question, could Delta Dromius perform the breaststroke? The answer is yes. Do what you will with that information. The Delta Dromius has had a somewhat sad existence. In the scientific field, it has been burdened with confusion and debate on how this animal would have lived and how it should have been classified. In pop culture, it has been almost completely ignored, often overlooked in favor of larger, more well-known dinosaurs. But Delta Dromius' ability to survive in such a hostile and unforgiving environment is truly remarkable. And with such incredible speed and lethal weapons, the Delta Dromius was a formidable predator in its own right. 
It really is owed more respect and recognition, especially considering how bad a hand it was dealt. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Delta Dromius, and if you've heard this dinosaur before the video. We've had a bit of a hot streak of obscure dinosaurs over the last few weeks, so next week we'll be covering a more prominent dinosaur with the Disney darling, Iguanodon. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.